from Blaster, often crude, always lewd, rarely rude, smoky, phase, phase, I'm smoky phase, phase, the Janice Phoenix for comedy, and you're not. The funniest there was, the funniest there is, the funniest there ever will be. The idiot savant of comedy. Whether you laugh or don't laugh, learn to laugh, because I'm the funniest person going today. The Hayabusa plague bearer. Curing the plague comedy has become. Coke 4. Plays bit 13. Gephyrophobia. April dates. My relationships started Rocky, the told first girlfriend that I love her. Her voice cracked. The reply was, Arr! I think I love you too. It's like eating the bad chicken nugget. Eventually it happens. Even when it looks good, can't tell to bite in. Then worried to ever try another one. Fearful happens again. She might smell great. Or be hot. Only taste sour. Like raw chicken. Fatty peas pull off the drumstick. Like when I used to eat the KFC, there used to be like the drumstick. It'd always be like that little fatty piece like right in the base. You'd have to like pull it out because I'd never eat it. It was just so nasty. Does this cause gamma gamophobia or gamophobia? Not to be confused with Gephyrophobia, which I have, akin to the Meonic Vampire or Beowulf. Fear and anxiety, crossing bridges or running water. It's like a real thing, too. You, you know, I always thought it was just me. I'd always have, like, this fearful thing, like this image of the vehicle, like, going off, like, going off to the side, into the water, and then, you know what I mean? Like, then you gotta try to get out of the car or whatever, you're gonna drown and stuff like that, so I'd always want to be in the middle lane. Never wanted to be the outside lane. So I always hated like going over bridges. So whatever happens is somehow I end up where I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go over a bridge. This person, Aura, she was living in Westchester and she's going to college in like Suffolk. So somehow she ropes me into where I'm gonna take her there. Or whatever, I don't even know what happened. You know how it is with females. So, I got to drive over the Tappan Zee Bridge, and there's actually a thing where you can call, and you can actually have them drive your car over, because, like, it's a real thing where people are afraid of. It's not like a joke. So, you know, I didn't do that, but... So somehow she calls me at night. She's telling me how, like, this guy that's, like, a cross-dresser, a tranny that she's living with, like, he, like, he overheard the conversation we had, and she's, like, jealous. He's jealous, whatever. So she's like, gotta get out of there. So somehow she talks me into it. I'm gonna go pick her up. I go to like this hotel or something. So it's just like, you know, I drive across, you know, for the first time. So I actually make it across the Tappan Zee Bridge. At some point, I think I'm lost. I'm in Yonkers or something. And this guy, I think I talked to him and he had me follow his way into Westchester or wherever she lived. Maybe she lived in Yonkers. Whatever it was, I kept like driving by, driving by. For whatever reason, I kept driving by. She's already out there with like all her luggage. She's calling me, I'm calling her. My cell phone's like dying because I didn't plan out to go out there that night. I thought I was going to take her. The person that she was living with was actually driving from Westchester to Suffolk and taking her to the class and waiting for the class. So you know what I mean? That must have been annoying as hell because I wouldn't want to be doing that. At the time, I was doing fantasy sports. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking basically from that point of view, the fantasy. Because I'm thinking, ah, oh, maybe I get a laptop, maybe I could be doing some lineups and shit like that. So I used to do a lot. I used to do just like $5,000 just in entry fees. So somehow I'm out there, I don't know, I turn through something or whatever. Bam, I got like a flat tire or two flat tires. I don't know, I got like hit with a spike or something. I don't know what happened. But I knew I had a flat or whatever. So I'm lost, I'm driving around, finally I call my sister to get some sort of directions because, you know, she could look it up. I don't have a GPS or anything like that. You know, so I finally find her and I've been like, I've been like freaking driving back and forth. So I kept missing her. So then I find her and I call AAA to see what they can do. And like, the guy's nice and everything. And it's like, 
I, I'd have to get towed to like the nearest station, which would be upstate. So I'd be stuck there for like another day or whatever. So he puts like the donut on. I think I had one or two flats. I don't remember. So now I got to drive over the Tappan Bridge again, and this time I'm with the donut. So it's just like, what the hell? So anyways, I go across, I get across, and bam, I make it. Then she's got me looking for some hotel, a motel that's like friggin' closed. So I'm driving and driving and driving. And it's just like, like an hour. And I'm like, like, why don't you just crash? Why don't you stay with me or whatever? So that was, that was just a crazy thing. So, you know, we're not going to talk too much about that. But you know what? So, relationships are really weird. Eventually she moved to Huntington, where I dated this other girl. We'll call these ones April dates. So first getting there, uh, you know, she looked like a, a pretty Sandra Bullock. Uh, you know, I'm driving to Southampton College. So it's funny, one girl is from Southampton, this other one's going to Southampton College. The other girl moves to Huntington, this girl's from Huntington. So it's like my tape deck of stereo stops working on the way there, and it's like friggin', uh, you know, I find everything, like this closed coffee shop, the lady lets me in and everything, she gives me directions, stuff like this. So the arrival, I go in, a female lets me in, uh, you know, she, she, she explains the dorm room, how everything works, how you gotta buzz in and this and this. And you know, she's like, oh, you know, I feel a little bit weird letting a guy I don't even know into my room and stuff like that. I'm like, thanks, I didn't feel weird until you told me that. She had like a muscle and fitness magazine and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. So I go to this pagan dorm where like everyone in the dorm is pagan, somebody lets me in. Uh, it's like uh, I meet some people and stuff. So, you know, they were pretty cool. And we got all the one was into crystals. I might have gotten along with her better than the other one. So we're hanging out. I drive to some place as the tape deck starts working again. They like my music. I don't know. I think I had like Immortal. Maybe I had Venom. Maybe I had Mayhem. I know April, she liked Slipknot, like that type of stuff. So we walked to some keg party. And April's like fucking a few years younger than me. She's like 20 years old. She's drinking. She's drinking beer. And, uh, you know, she keeps telling me like five times. It's like, my dad's an alcoholic. But I'm not. And I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe the third, fourth, or fifth time you told me that, I got a little nervous about that. So, you know, all of a sudden I see this guy like wheeling out the peg, and I'm thinking, damn, man, they're crazy out here in the Hamptons. They don't screw around. And it turned out that it was the police breaking up the party. So we return, we return, we play some weird game where you got to say something about the person. So, you know, they said I didn't have to play, but I'm stupid, so I go and I play. And she's going on, and I said how this blind girl was nice, all this other stuff. So then April comes and bam, she just trashes the girl that I was just nice to. She was funny as hell. Uh, you know, so we went through a few movies. She liked, uh, she liked, what well, we saw like Boiler Room, we saw The Ninth Gate. So one of the movies, like you're always nervous, not sure what to do around the girl, this or that. She's like, are you going to talk the entire time? But she didn't say nasty like that, so I'm like, good. Then I don't have to say anything. So that was pretty funny. Ah, uh, so yeah, we, you know, it's fucking, the only thing is, uh, yeah, I fucking, we played air hockey, that was like the last time, and she was telling me how she beat a boyfriend, she beat a father, she beat like all these people in air hockey, but you know what, she didn't beat me, I crushed her, I had stitches in my hand, my right hand, so I'm like playing a lefty, and I was just fucking crushing her, destroying her. And that was like the last date. She wanted me to go to this club. We went with a friend and we took her, we dropped her off at this club. And then she wanted me to go to the club and get a friend out of the club and this and all that shit. I'm like, you know what, fuck that. You know, I don't want to be part of your drama. So I kind of lost contact when she turned 21 because, you know, my dad's an alcoholic, but she's not. So I think she started going to the bars and stuff. And you know what, that's not really my thing. I don't like to drink and shit like that. I don't like to drink. I don't be around sloppy drunk women. You know what? When it's rolled and when it's dank, smoky days haze can possess you. When it's rolled and when it's dank, smoky days haze can obsess you. The dank phoenix of comedy, the hay booster plague bearer, whatever you want to call me, wherever I am, where dank is.